All right, you too. Welcome back to Backcountry Hunting and Outdoors. On this video, I'm going to show you how I like to cook my javelina. This is one method that I use, and this is how I make my javelina stew. First and foremost, you're going to need a piece of some javelina meat. This is a front leg from a javelina. It's pretty much all I got left. I don't have too much left, but it has the bone in. If you have it boned out, boned it out already, that's fine. That'll work too. I like to throw in some cabbage, onion, baby carrots, celery, and of course, whatever seasonings you like. <clears throat> I also have some Creole seasoning. Tony Satchery is over there, the original. I'm going to throw that in there as well. The key is the cream of chicken that I use right here. You can also use the cream of mushroom or whatever you fancy on that. You can use two small cans or you can get one big can, right? Of course, you know, you gotta add the can of your soup and a can of water for each can that you use. Let's get this thing popping, baby. This is the javelina we're gonna be eating here today, folks. I uh, harvest this javelina back in March which was the end of the last hunting season. But this is him here. A lot of people don't like to eat javelina. I mean, it's not the best meat, but it is good if you cook it and prepare it right. But I've pretty much eaten all parts of this javelina. I've eaten the two legs. I've eaten all the ribs. Um, we're gonna eat that front leg today and I barred it off. I'm not a part of a front leg with a buddy of mine for some wild hog meat. But this is it right here. This is what we're gonna be eating. All right, you got your crock pot. Gonna throw in my cream of chicken. All right, I'm gonna fill these two cans up with water. Dump that on in. gonna be real clumpy you just want to get it less clumpy than what it is this is that original Creole I was telling you about I refer to these as the red top and blue top so in there I don't use measuring spoons I just keep pouring my seasonings until my ancestor tells me that's enough child and then I stop I know this may look like a lot, but when it's all said and done, still got to add some more. Stir it up a little bit. All right, now we're gonna start on our vegetables. I like to put the potatoes at the bottom. I forgot to mention, you wanna add the little potatoes. That's what I do. I like to get the small. So once I'm done preparing my vegetables, so I did use a whole onion over here. Keep in mind, I peel off the first two, sometimes even three layers, you know, the hard shell of it. This is about five or six stalks of celery, almost a full pack. This is about a pack and a half of carrots. This is about 12 small potatoes here, you know. I don't really measure anything. I kind of just go with the flow. I get the feel for it and I just throw it in. You know, I kind of experiment as I go sometimes. But this has worked for me in the past. Next, we're going to come over here to the crock pot. I'm going to start with the potatoes. I'm going to throw the potatoes at the bottom. We want those nice and well done. And I kind of just make a little bed with them there, all right? Then I'm gonna throw in the javelina, then I'm gonna throw the vegetables all around it. All right, folks, this is that javelina front leg all cleaned off, and look at that meat there. That's some good, high-quality meat. You can't get this stuff in the store, folks. I'm telling you right now. I also want you to know, this javelina that I showed you in this front leg, I went out, I hunted this javelina, 
I skinned it on my own. I processed it. I butchered it on my own, both in the field and back here in my backyard. You know, when I was first starting, you know, I always thought, hey, once I kill something, I need to take it to a processor. You don't have to take it to a processor. You can do this yourself. It ain't hard. Uh, when I go on my Havelina hunt this year, I'll make sure I document it so you guys can see exactly how I do it. All right, let's get this sucker seasoned up. Going back to our seasonings. <clears throat> I'm just going to take it. Like I said, I don't believe in measuring. Right, I just keep going until my ancestors tell me to stop. So, let's get this sucker going. Guess I can do a side at a time. Give it a nice little coat. Most of this is going to fall off into the, the soup anyway. All right. We're going to take our well-seasoned leg, stick it right on into the pot. Now, if it don't fit, make it fit. <clears throat> if I got to cut it, I cut it if I have to. This is a little stiff. <clears throat> Come on. There we go. Once it's softened up, it'll relax. And it'll drop on in. Gotta move our potatoes around a little bit. We want them at the bottom if we can get it. Just start dumping everything else on in there. Just like so. Let's get all of that in there. Uh, this stuff is gonna break down. So don't think that it's gonna stay like that for long. Once this stuff gets off, it'll all go down to the bottom. And believe me when I tell you, this is some good eating right here, people. Once you're done with your desired amount of cabbage, we can go ahead and throw it on in. Put it right at the top, stuff it in the sides. Once it gets soft, it'll break down. All right, let's put that top on. Make sure the top closes all the way. Now, the thing about this, you can cook it in a shorter amount of time if you raise up the heat, of course. But I like to cook it low and slow, baby. Put it on low. We're gonna cook this for goddamn eight, nine hours. How I like to do it. Good thing about this, once you hit that thing, you hit that sucker, you can walk away. You can go to work. You can go do whatever you gotta do. It ain't gonna burn. It's gonna sit here and it's gonna cook real slow. And that meat's gonna get real tender. All those vegetables are gonna soften up. It's gonna taste amazing. Believe me. So Got the time. I'm going to pull this out at about, I said about 5.30. But what you want to do, an hour, hour and a half before it's done, before you're done cooking it, you're going to pull out this front leg. You're going to debone it. You're going to take all the meat off the bone and you're going to put it back there in your stew. And you're going to let it cook and simmer for that last hour, hour and a half without the bone. And believe me, it is amazing. We'll come back to the video when I debone this leg. YouTube, here we go, many hours later. We're about to debone this heaven in the leg. It's looking good now. Drop that sucker right here. Stir it up a little bit. There we go. It smells really good right now. All right, mix up all your vegetables. Get everything in there, everything's getting nice and soft. Put that in there. Now we're just gonna get all the meat off the bone. You can cut this off any way you like. I just get it all off the bone and I shred it. YouTube, when it's all said and done, this is what you end up with right here. Look at that. Nice, good. It smells real good. All right, get you some rice. I like to use jasmine rice. 
Use any kind of rice you want. It's some good stuff if you haven't tried it. I reckon when you try it out, it's pretty good. Those of you that know me, you want to try it, glad to have you over one day. This is it. And it's good eating. See you next time.